2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 14, 15, 16, 17. 17 books to haul for you guys. I need to put myself in a book buying ban, 100%. <laughs> I always have a little rat's tail because my hair isn't long enough to stay up, so just ignore that. Hello, my sweet friends. I hope you're all doing well. Today, I have a book haul to share with you guys, which I am so excited about. Obviously, we've just had Christmas, and I received a lot of books, so almost all of these were Christmas gifts, or I purchased them with gift cards or money that I received for Christmas, and then I also went thrifting yesterday, and I had the best book thrifting experience that I've ever had. I got so many good books, so I thought I would also show you those while I'm at it. This will also give you an insight, I guess, to a lot of my TBR for the first part of this year. A few of them I have already read or started, so I'll give you my quick thoughts if I have read them, but most of them I haven't got around to yet because there's quite a few here. The first one that I got for Christmas was A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. This was on my TBR for so long, and I just never really got around to it, so I put it on my Christmas list. I received it for Christmas. I started at Christmas Day, finished it a couple days later, and then with the money that I received for Christmas, I went back and bought the second and third in the series. If you don't know, it is a three-part series. I also ended up reading the second one, which is Good Girl, Bad Blood. Really enjoyed both of these they were both four star reads for me and these were actually my two final reads of 2021 but I am yet to read the last one in the series which is called as good as dead I am really excited to pick it up but I just wanted to read something different after I finished those other two I just wanted to get into another world with other characters and this one's a bit more of a chunker so I feel like I have to be in the right mood to pick this one up beautiful floppy paperback though love books like this I also received these two books for Christmas and these are both part of the addicted slash Callaway sisters series and these are the next two books that I didn't have. I think this is the fifth and the sixth book in the series out of 10. And I've been slowly purchasing this series over time because they are expensive books. I think I've been purchasing them from Amazon because I think that's the cheapest place I've been able to find them. And they're still quite expensive, especially as you get further into the series. Some of them are upwards of $40, which is absolutely insane. So I'm very thankful that I got these for Christmas. This one is Hot House Flower and it's the first book from Daisy and Rack's perspective. I have already read this this was my first read of 2022 and I did really like this one. I feel like Daisy and Rack have such fun personalities and so their story was so fun to read. Something that I really love about the whole addicted friendship group is that they're all so incredibly different so all of their perspectives when you're reading about them in different books are just so different which makes it really interesting and then the other one that I got was Thrive which is number six in the series and this is back to Lily and Lowe's perspective and I'm really excited to pick this one up whenever I do pick it up <laughs> whenever I get around to it because I really miss them as a couple I don't know who my favorite couple is now that I've read at least one book from each couple's perspective I still don't know but the last book that I read was Daisy's the book before that was Rose and so I kind of miss Lily and Lo and I'm excited to get back to reading their little storyline. Very excited to add these to my ever-growing Addicted Callaway Sisters series collection. Another Christmas gift that I am also very excited about, another one that I've had on my TBR slash wish list for the longest time is the Atlas Six. This is probably one of my favorite book covers I've ever seen. I think it's so stunning. Very simple, very minimal, but extremely effective in my opinion. Again, this is a very expensive book to purchase, so hence why it was on my wish list. And I feel like it's just the type of vibe that I would really enjoy. I think from what I've heard, it's kind of that dark academia vibe. I feel like those books are very atmospheric and I love books that you can really dive into and feel like you're actually there. So I'm very excited to pick this one up. I honestly don't know that much about it apart from those things that I've mentioned. I prefer to go into a book not knowing anything apart from a very basic recommendation from someone. So a lot of these, I don't really know what they're about, but I don't care because I have heard they're great and I want to experience them for myself with no knowledge because then I feel like I can fully experience it with my own eyes, my own perspective, I guess. Moving on to some books that I purchased with gift cards and things like that. The first one that I got was You and Me on Vacation by Emily Henry, which I feel like everyone and their dog has read by now. And now I can say I have two because I finished this one just the other day. I won't give too many thoughts, but as a whole, I did really enjoy it. I feel like it took me a little while to get into it, but once I was into it, I really enjoyed the characters. I really enjoyed the storyline. I do feel like with this and Beach Read, Emily Henry's stories and her characters just feel very similar. Although 
though they have a lot of differences and the stories themselves are quite different, they just feel very, very similar. And I don't love that when authors just seem to kind of recreate the same vibe and story and characters every time they write a new book. So I'm interested to see what her new book is like that's coming out this year. I think it's called Book Lovers. I'll hopefully get my hands on that and be able to give you my thoughts. But as a whole, you and me on vacation and Beach Read just feel very the same to me in my brain. Again, still very different characters, different stories, but they just feel the same. I also got my hands on It Happened One Summer by Tessa Bailey. I got this from QBD Books and I think they may have just brought in Tessa Bailey very recently because I don't think I was able to find her books there previously. I haven't read this one yet, but this is huge on TikTok, huge on the internet. So I am very interested to see what I think. A lot of people compare it to The Simple Wild in terms of vibe kind of like the setting and i think it's grumpy sunshine i could be wrong please forgive me if i am and i enjoyed the simple wild but it wasn't like my favorite ever so i'm interested to see what i think about this one i also haven't read any of tessa bailey's books before i did try and listen to an audio book i don't even remember which one it was i borrowed it from the library it might have been fixer up or at least one of those in that little companion series and i dnf'd it because i really didn't like it so i'm interested to see what I think about this, I generally seem to enjoy physical books a lot more than audio books, so we'll see. And finally, I picked up my first fantasy box set, which is very exciting for me. This is the Folk of the Air trilogy by Holly Black. So the Cruel Prince, the Wicked King and the Queen of Nothing. I have seen a lot of people post about the Cruel Prince on TikTok and stuff, but I'd never really heard anything about the actual story or a very in-depth review, I guess. And then when I went to QBD, I was just looking at all their books and I saw this little box set and I was like, something is drawing me to this. But I was like, no, I don't read fantasy. I've never really got into fantasy before. I don't know if I'd enjoy it. I don't know if I want to commit to a box set because what if I don't like it? And so I was like, no, I won't do it. And then, like a week later, I went to a different QBD store and there it was again, this box set, just sitting there, staring into my soul, being like, pick me, choose me. And I was like, you know what? Why not? Let's give it a go. It was on sale for $29.99, which is an absolute steal. It's so wild to me that I could get three books for $30. That just doesn't happen in Australia, I feel like. Getting a paperback for $10 is extremely good. And I had a $30 voucher, so it just felt like fate. So I ended up picking this up and I actually just started The Cruel Prince last night. And guys, I am thoroughly enjoying it. I think I'm only 50 pages in, but I'm shocked at how much I'm enjoying it. Like I said, I don't think I've ever read fantasy. I own Akatar. I haven't read it yet. I've tried to read it one time and I was just like, oh, I'm not in the mood for this. Like I can't do it. But this, I'm already invested and I've hardly even started. So I'm very excited to see what my first experience is like reading fantasy. Maybe I'll become a fantasy gal. Let's get onto the books that I've thrifted recently because I have been strangely very successful Successful. I got all of these books for $15 total. All of these, $15. All from the same op shop at the same time. Mind blowing. I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of these were donated by the same person because you don't usually find this many good titles at one time in a thrift store. Also, can I just say, if you're a book lover, book collector, go thrift some books because they always have so, so, so many and I always find really great books there for obviously an incredible price. So definitely recommend thrifting for books. The first one that I got is Again But Better by Christine Riccio or Riccio. I have a feeling it's gonna be Riccio. Forgive me for my pronunciation. I'm almost certain I'm gonna get it wrong. But I've actually never heard anything about this book or this author. I've never read anything else by them. But after I read the back, it appears like it's a second chance romance, which is one of my favorite tropes. So that got me hooked. And the other thing that got me hooked is that it is blurbed by Colleen Hoover and Christina Lauren. So if they both recommend this, surely I'll love it. Every other time I found a book that was blurbed by Colleen Hoover, I've loved it. So let's hope this is the same. Then I found The Swap by Robin Harding. I really enjoy Robin Harding's writing. Um, I've read two other books by her, The Arrangement and The Family Next Door, I think it's called. Like I said, I've enjoyed her other books. I would say that I enjoyed The Arrangement more than I enjoyed The Family Next Door, but overall both were really interesting reads. And I've actually had this one on my list for a while. So when I saw this at the op shop, they actually had two copies. I was like, I need to get you. I honestly have no idea what it's about, to be completely honest. Oh, okay. It's about two couples who become friends and then they suggest swapping partners. Interesting. Again, it is a thriller, so 
kind of love that. I haven't read a thriller in a hot minute, so I might end up picking this one up quite soon. Then I found this one, which is a Francine Rivers novel, which I'm very excited about. It's called Bridge to Haven. If you haven't heard of Francine Rivers, she is a Christian fiction author and I thoroughly enjoy her books. I have a slowly growing collection of her novels and almost all of her books I've been able to thrift. So I would definitely recommend keeping your eye out for Francine Rivers books when you're op shopping and looking at books because I've been able to find quite a few. This book isn't in great shape, but honestly, if I'm thrifting a book, I don't really care about the quality of it. Like I'm only paying $2, I don't care if it's got bent pages or something like that, but I'm very excited to check that one out. Then I also found this one. Everything is Pooped by Mark Manson, who is also the author of the orange version of this. What is it even called? Oh, it literally says on the top. The subtle art of not giving a poop. I have kind of read the orange one. I listened to the audiobook, but I cannot remember a single thing from it. So I should probably get my hands on that one at some stage. I don't remember being obsessed with it, but I also remember thinking it had some interesting points. So I'm very interested to see how this book compares. Apparently it's a book about hope. I really have no other knowledge. I just saw this book and was like, oh, that's a very well-known author. I've seen that book before. It's $2. I want to read more nonfiction this year. Let's just grab it. Then I found Divergent by Ver Veronica Roth and I feel like again everyone and their dog has read the Divergent series and I never did and I don't know why because I feel like it was quite popular around the same time as The Hunger Games or maybe very soon after The Hunger Games had its peak time and I was obsessed with The Hunger Games. That was one of the series that really got me into reading when I was in primary school. I read it in year seven. And The Hunger Games was the first series that I just like consumed. Like I read all of those books in like one day each. And so I don't know why I never read the Divergent series because I feel like a lot of people that were fans of that were also fans of this. I do definitely feel like the Divergent series is one of those books that you can always find at the thrift stores. I feel like this, Fifty Shades of Grey, the Twilight series. Any book that was extremely popular a few years ago, you can almost always find multiple copies of it at a thrift store. So I think this is just one of those things. And I'm excited to see what I think of this. And then lastly, I found Boy Swallows Universe by Trent Dalton. And this has been on my TBR for a long time as well. I've never read any books by this author, but he is an Australian author. So I think it would be really interesting to read this. It's also based in Brisbane, which is where I'm from, which is cool. So I'm excited to get my hands on this. Again, Again, it was very popular a little while ago. Haven't heard much about it recently, but I'm excited to see what I think. And those are all the books that I have accumulated in the past month or so. Probably far too many for the rate at which I read books, but I'm excited to add these to my bookshelf and slowly get through them over the year. I feel like Christmas and my birthday, I just accumulate large quantities of books and then I slowly read them and get through them. So I'm very happy that my TBR is full again. If you've read any of the books that I showed you guys today, I would love to hear your thoughts on them without spoilers, of course, or just let me know what's on your TBR for this year, I'd love to hear that. Also, I feel like 2022 is the year of booktube for me. So if you wanna see more book videos, definitely subscribe. I always forget to say that, just so you're notified every time I upload a new video. But I love you guys, and I will see you very soon in my next one. Goodbye.